Look, I'm not trying to start a battle in the comment section, but let me just lay it to you straight. Fue Coco over Sprigatito. That's it. All right, what's going on everybody? It's Zachary Switch Force, and we are here to bring you everything we know so far about Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, the surprise humongous 2022 releases that were just announced this morning. Now there's been more details revealed and a lot of intricacies about the game, about the world, and about the Pokemon that I need to give straight to you. So make sure to hit that like button if you're excited for these games and let me know your favorite part of them in the comments down below and maybe your favorite Pokemon because I'm about to give you a huge list of who's all included in these versions and it's not everybody. So, oh my gosh, are we gonna do that whole National Dex controversy again? We'll have to wait and see, but let's start off with some obvious stuff, okay? Two versions, both on Switch, Scarlet and Violet. This is a callback to the OG Pokemon games where they pick two colors and let you make the choice. Eventually they went to like Sun and Moon, X and Y, Sword and Shield, but we're back to the basics. In fact, we're so back to the basics that Scarlet is just a variant of Red. Now Violet is new, there hasn't been a Pokemon Purple, but I love it. And as you can see, I got the colors in the scene all set to these two games Supreme, and they will be releasing late 2022. Now there is no more specific window other than late, but to me, it means November. Pokemon pretty much always comes out in November. And if you track recent Pokemon releases, they've all been in November. This is the true tentpole title of the year. Legends Arceus, great. They chose that to come out in January. This is the end of the year, Black Friday shopping season, holiday gift extraordinaire game that Nintendo and Game Freak have picked. Gen 9, Pokemon, Scarlet and Violet, it's gotta be November. Before we get any further, my fine friends at Lexar make the best memory card you can possibly pick up for Nintendo Switch. The Lexar Play Card is awesome, and it comes in sizes up to one terabyte. So as Nintendo keeps releasing these Pokemon games on Switch, you can keep them all safe. I mean, they're gonna put out four major Pokemon titles in 18 months, which is insane. And if you consider the other versions, that's like six total SKUs in 18 months, $60 each, $360 a Pokemon, you need a place to put them. So make sure to click the link in the description down below. I promise you, switch for seal of approval. This is the fastest, safest, most reliable, and securest best memory card you can possibly pick up. Now let's get those starters out there, all right? Because I think for a lot of people, this is going to be the most difficult time-consuming choice in generations. Now, some people have expressed a bit of kerfluffle around the fact that Game Freak always goes fire, grass, water. But when the fire, grass, water look this good, it's hard to complain. Sprigatito, the grass cat, Fue Coco, the fire croc, and Quaxley, the duckling Pokemon, all have amazing merits. It seems like Sprigatito is winning the early poll. He seems to be the one that everybody has fallen in love with, but I am making the pitch to make Fue Coco the mascot of Gen 9. Look, he's a fire crocodile. Cats, ducks, dogs, we've had a lot of them. Crocodiles? Yes, please. He also just has an insanely charming look, a very big mouth, and he seems happy to be here. But there's more to these starters than just their fun types and their faces. There's the names and the origins. And based on all we've seen in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we can very accurately predict where these games take place. The new region for Gen 9 is almost assuredly based on Spain. And we can tell that straight from the starters, okay? Gatito means little cat in Spanish, and Fuego means fire in Spanish. It's right baked in to the starters' names. But there's plenty more, because as you saw in the trailer, a lot of interesting landmarks and different locales were shown off. You know that super cool shot of the mosaics of all the different types of Pokemon, like psychic, water, fighting? That's actually a riff on the Plaza de España in Seville, where they have mosaics depicting the different regions of Spain. The architecture, the style of house, even the lake in the trailer looks very similar to Sanabria Lake in Spain. There's big spired castle type structures and they just ooze Spanish influence. Very similar to the Sagrada Familia with its four spires. And if you take a look at this shot, it looks very similar. We've also got a very nice shot of some windmills moving at maybe not the best frame rate that seem to be inspired by the windmills of Don Quixote from Castilla-La Mancha. Game Freak loves to go real world locale based for their brand new generations of Pokemon. We saw Great Britain in the UK inspire a sword and shield. They've used Hawaii with the Alolan region. And now it looks like they are definitely going Spain, maybe Portugal, that area of the globe for whatever they call the region in Scarlet and Violet. And we actually have our first glimpse of the map. It's not the whole map, but it's some of the map that was shown off in one of the houses in game. And you freeze frame it and you can see 
ah, a beautiful coastline and some grassy fields and whatever else this map might make up. But obviously it will incorporate a whole bunch of different areas to show off different kinds of landscapes and different regions and different homes and hubs for all the types of Pokemon. Now, speaking of Pokemon, this is going to be a big world. All right, Nintendo has confirmed that this is an open world game. You might be saying, Pokemon has been open world, but let me walk you back. Because they began with Sword and Shield and they had the wild areas, which were segmented sections that you could venture into. And then over in Pokemon Legends Arceus, they had separate little Hisuian hubs, the campsites, where you could load into a distinct region. But now they're promising true open world, which to me means modernized 2022 open world. No annoying load screen segmenting the action, no separation between catching, battling, town going, side quests, main quest, gyms, it's all gonna flow. We also know that Pokemon will be everywhere. All right, the games have started to go in this direction and that was great in Legends Arceus. Now it sounds like it's going to be even better. They say on the official website that Pokemon will be in the skies, in the seas, in the forests, and on the streets. And I wonder what the limitations there are. If it is going to be a truly seamless world, no loads move in and out, like, is it possible to throw down on the city streets or is there like a barrier like, okay, put your Pokeballs away, holster them weapons, and we ain't gonna have any fights breaking out in the streets of this city. It'll be curious to see how they decide to work it out, but more so than just following along or more so than just popping up in the grass, this seems to be a true Pokemon world where all the Pokemon just exist. They're doing their thing. And that should be even a bigger factor than in Legends Arceus because Legends Arceus is more like go out into the field and see them in their habitat and then kind of remove yourself and go back and then re-enter and remove. And, and this isn't going to have that. This is going to be the Pokemon are everywhere. They're kind of overflowing the boundaries that we've previously seen exist in Pokemon games. And I'm super excited for it how that impacts battling, catching, and just our general relationship with the Pokemon themselves, interacting with other trainers, NPCs, it's gonna be really fun to fully realize. In fact, I personally hope that they do bring in a lot of gameplay mechanics from Legends Arceus, and we do have an indication that Legends Arceus has an influence here. Outside of the graphics, which, duh, like they do look very similar, albeit better here in Scarlet and Violet, which is awesome to see, there's also one Pokemon shown off in the trailer that matters more than all the rest, and that's Hisuian Zoroark, showing that Hisuian Pokemon are going to be here, and that has me hopeful that they will incorporate even more. A bunch of the cool Hisuian forms, as well as a bunch of the cool upgrades that we saw in Legends Arceus now making their way to the mainline game. But do not be surprised if they do stay true to sort of the more core formula of the mainline games. I'm interested to see how much of Legends Arceus oozes into mainline or whether they pull that all back and say, no, no, the way that mainline games go is the way that mainline games go. We do have a list of a whole bunch of Pokemon and you can go look at it right here. Let me know which one has you most excited. Some notable shout outs for you. Uh, we've got Staravia, we've got Magnemite, we've got Blissey and Chansey, Meowth, Persian, Pichu, Pikachu, Jumplove, obviously the three starters, Drifloon, Combi, Lucario, Riolu, uh, a Tyranitar, Larvitar. So far we've got a list of about 46 Pokemon that have been spotted and surely there will be many more. But how many more, we do not know. Now, Pokemon Home integration will be a part of this game. It shows off on Nintendo's main page, but it also notes that you'll only be able to transfer Pokemon that are already existing in these versions, indicating that, hey, they're not gonna have them all. Now, how many do they have, man? We'll save that conversation and debate for another day. I just gotta say, there's so many Pokemon We'd love for them to put them all in, but let's not get so bent out of shape about what the decks ends up being that we take away from the enthusiasm, the excitement, and the fun of this fantastic new adventure, new generation, that to me feels like this is the real Switch generation. It looks a lot like Generation 8, Sword and Shield, was more of a carryover. Like, hey, the 3DS happened, the Switch is happening, oh my gosh, what do we do? And I almost think that they used Pokemon Legends Arceus as practice to prepare for a more 3D world and how they would truly step forward into a home console type future for their mainline games, and Scarlet and Violet are the full realization of that vision for the Switch. Yes, it's coming out like five and a half years after the launch of the system, but I feel like Scarlet and Violet will feel like the Switch's true Pokemon, 
and Sword and Shield might not. And, and that's crazy because Sword and Shield have sold amazing. And I don't think anyone expected that in 18 months, we would have new Pokemon Snap, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, Legends Arceus, and Scarlet and Violet. That is a crazy overload of Pokemon. Some may say too much Pokemon, and some may say bring it on, especially when it looks this bold and this good. We cannot forget our trusty playable characters, and Nintendo has shown off the trainers that you will play as depending if you pick Violet or Scarlet. Now, it's the same male and female base model, but their outfits change colors. Even their socks get different stripes, and they've got these interesting hats and these ties and these little shorts and these high socks, and I actually like the look of the characters. I like the look of the entire artistic choice of the game because it feels like the perfect blend between everything. Like it's more Let's Go than Sword and Shield. It doesn't have the painterly style and more of the old fashioned vibes of Legends Arceus, but at the same time, it does look like crisp, clean, and the future, it also doesn't try to be realistic, but it's trying to look better than before. And there's some really nice shots. I like to call out the one with the rain and the Psyduck. I think that looks fantastic. And then these shots right here of these wonderful characters in front of their houses and in front of the sea, man. Stunning sights for a Pokemon game. And if you compare these directly next to Sword and Shield, wow, have they really upgraded. I'm not sure there has been a faster snowball effect. Like Game Freak decided to Graveler roll this thing so quickly. To go from Sword and Shield to Legends Arceus to Scarlet and Violet, like the amount of leaps they made, they really took a crash course to make this happen. I don't know where they signed up, what masterclass they decided to pay for, but their gaming development shops have seriously leveled up. So when will we get more? Well, E3 time is a perfect time, and we know Nintendo will have a big summer direct in probably the second week of June. Now that is a great place for more Pokemon to show up, but Game Freak and the Pokemon Company do like to operate independently, so it's perfectly plausible that they could announce a Scarlet and Violet dedicated Pokemon Presents that deep dives into these games. And in fact, if I was a betting man, I would lean that direction. Perhaps we'll see something sooner than June. Maybe they'd like to inform us about more in May. That feels like a nice time, and we have had instances where Pokemon Presents and E3 do kind of come close together so that Nintendo doesn't need to take tons of time in their main presentation to talk Pokemon. The Pokemon Company can kind of hold their own. And clearly they can because they are pumping out so many games this Switch generation. What a stellar morning it was, and what a fun future we have with two brand new Gen 9 Pokemon games and a whole new world of Pokemon, locations, gym leaders, characters, and hopefully mechanics. I think what I want to leave you with is that my hope for this game is that it's not just a graphical overhaul and it's not just an incorporation of a seamless world with less load screens, but that they do continue to evolve the mechanics. I think most of what made Legends Arceus special is that it flipped the script, that it felt different, that it wasn't the same Pokemon we've played time and time again. And I do know that this is mainline, so it will be more like that, but I think there's room for growth, there's room for improvement, and I don't want to see a step forward in Legends Arceus to a step back in Scarlet and Violet, and I think there's a happy middle ground where we can move forward while still acknowledging the past and, and create the best Pokemon. Like, this could be the era where Pokemon just gets better and better and better, and we see significant step-ups from game to game to game, it's glorious. It's great, and I cannot wait to hear what you think. But that's everything we know thus far about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I will fill you in with more as soon as we hear it. For now, though, that's what we got. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that like button if you're excited for the games. Let me know what you're most pumped about in the comments down below, or a Pokemon you really want to hear announced for this game and see in this great new graphical style. Until next time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. And until next time, love you lots. Switch Force, out.